Hello everyone, I am Vijay Gadbe and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to understand the Databricks file system. The Databricks file system is an arbitration layer over the cloud storage and with the help of that, we can manage our files easily in the Databricks environment. So in this video, first we will understand the theoretical part and after that we will see the practical examples. In this video, we are going to understand about the Databricks file system, in short DBFS. So first we will understand the theoretical part and after that we will see the DBFS in practical. I'll try to keep the theoretical part as short as possible. Let us begin. DBFS is a distributed file system used by the Azure Databricks to interact with the cloud-based storage. So this is the main use of the DBFS to interact with the cloud storage. In simple words, we can say that it is a way for Databricks to interact with the cloud storage. Or you can say that it is a bridge that connects Databricks to places where data is stored. So this is what exactly DBFS is. Let us move ahead. The term DBFS refers two parts of the platform. First one is DBFS root and second one is DBFS mounts. The DBFS root is the main storage area for your data or you can say that it is a default storage location. And the DBFS mounts are the additional storage areas that you can connect to your DBFS root. Now note down this point, this is very important one. Storing and accessing data using the DBFS root or DBFS mounts is no longer recommended by the Databricks. The Databricks doesn't recommend using the DBFS root for the important data like your main files or scripts. Now there are better places to store these kinds of information or data. So the DBFS root refers to two main parts of the platform, DBFS root and the DBFS mounts. Let us understand what exactly the DBFS root is. The DBFS root is a place where data is stored when you create a new Databricks workspace. And as we discussed earlier, the Databricks doesn't recommend using DBFS root for the important data. These are the folders in DBFS root, file store, Databricks datasets and Databricks results. Under the file store, we have important data files, generated plots and uploaded libraries. The Databricks datasets are the sample public datasets and the Databricks results are the files generated by downloading full results of a query. So this is all about the DBFS root. Let us understand about the mount object storage. Mounting object storage to DBFS allows you to access the objects in object storage as if they were on the local file system. So with the help of mounts you can access the objects as they are on the local file system. So this is the mount object storage. As we discussed earlier, the Databricks no longer recommends using DBFS root or DBFS mounts for several reasons. Let us understand these reasons. Security concerns. Using DBFS mounts can introduce security vulnerabilities. Complexity. Managing DBFS mount can be complex, especially in large scale environments. Limitations The potential performance issues and restrictions on file sizes Incompatibility with the Unity Catalog The DBFS mounts are not compatible with the Unity Catalog. So these are the few reasons for which the Databricks no longer recommends using DBFS root or DBFS mounts. Instead of using the DBFS mounts, the Databricks recommends using Unity Catalog external locations. So theoretically this is all about the Databricks file system. Let us go to Databricks workspace and explore more about the DBFS. So here I am on the Azure portal. Go to Azure Databricks service. This is the workspace we have created Databricks-WS. Now launch the workspace. Let us go to compute. I already created this cluster, cluster 01. It is up and running. Now go to workspace. Then go to users. 
this is the user here we will create a notebook let us give the name databricks file system dbfs let us give a number 1 now connect to the cluster cluster 0 1 connecting and the cluster is connected successfully I'll open another Databricks workspace here. Let us try to see the DBFS. To do that, go to catalog. Under the catalog, we can see the DBFS. As of now, we are not able to see the DBFS here. To do that, we have to enable one option. Go to settings. Then go to advanced scroll down and here we have to enable dbfs file browser as of now it is off make it on note down this message we have to refresh the page for the changes to take effect let us refresh the page now go to catalog and here you can see browse dbfs Click on that. Here you can see the file store. We already discussed about the folders in dbfs root. First one is the file store. We can upload the data to file store from here. We have to click on upload or there is one more way. From the notebook go to file and here we have the same option upload data to dbfs. Let us upload data from here. Click on upload. DBFS target directory. You can specify the path here as well. Let us select the file. Go to desktop. Then files. And this is the file we are going to upload here. Automobile price data. This is a CSV file. Done. As well as we can upload from here. Upload data to dbfs. Now note down the path here. Let us compare the paths. While uploading from the catalog, we are uploading the files under the file store. And here we can specify the folder. And when we are trying to upload the file from notebook, then it is also uploaded under the file store. But here we are getting the target directory under the shared folders and under the user. Let us create a folder here. We are not going to upload under the shared uploads. I'll create a folder here. My underscore data. Let us select the file again. Now note down here. This is the file name automobile space price space data dot CSV. The Databricks is renaming the file here. Instead of spaces, it is specifying underscore automobile underscore price underscore data. This is to avoid the conflicts. Now click on next. This is the file location. DBFS file store. The folder that we have created my data and the CSV file. And here we are getting the code to access the files from notebook. This is the code for the PySpark. Here it is reading the file by defining the data frame. In similar way we are getting the code for pandas. Here first we have to import the pandas and then we can read the file. Similarly we are getting the code for R and Scala. Let us copy the code for the PySpark. Done. Let us explore the data that we have uploaded. Go to catalog. Browse dbfs. And under the file store, we have created this folder, my data. And under this folder, we have uploaded this file, automobile price data.csv. 
and under the file store also we have uploaded the same file i'll delete this one so finally we have the file under the file store let us use the magic command percentage fs ls and execute here we are getting all the folders available in the databricks you can see file store the databricks data sets the databricks results and we are getting one more folder volumes this is for the unity catalog in presentation we have discussed there are these three folders under the databricks root file store databricks data sets and databricks results now there is one more folder or you can say multiple folders for the volume dbfs volume and dbfs volumes here we are getting the same names again volumes is for the unity catalog we can use the db utils to get the same result db utils dot fs dot ls and specify the root folder forward slash and execute so here we are getting the same folder names let us use the display command so here we are getting the same result here we are using the magic command and here we are using the db utils in similar way we can see the details for any folder i'll copy the code paste let us see the details about the databricks data sets copy paste and execute we have to specify databricks data sets only we have to copy the name not path remember this so these are the folders and files under the databricks data sets as of now i'll delete this cell so these are the folders under the dbfs root now we will read the file that we have uploaded this file automobile price data to read the data under this file we will define a data frame let us call this data frame as df then we have to use the read method from the spark spark dot read then we have to specify the format the format of this file is csv you can see here it is recommending csv here it is recommending we will type the code dot option here we have to specify header as true i'll hit the tab button let us edit the code now spark dot read dot format so this is the file format csv under the option we are specifying header as true here we are setting the option for the csv reader by specifying header as true it is telling the spark that the first row of the csv file contains the column names if you specify here as false then it will not consider the first row as the column names after that here we are specifying the option infer schema true so here we are inferring the schema from the file and at the end we have to specify the path of the file under the load method with the help of load method we are loading the csv file located in the specified path let us get the path this is the file name copy path we have to copy this path spark api format copy and specify the path here let us execute this cell and define the data frame df let us display the data frame df so this is the data under the data frame df these are the column names and these are the rows so in this video we first explored the theoretical part about the dbfs after that we understood how to enable the dbfs to do that we have to go to the settings then advanced 
and from here you have to enable the dbfs file browser and after that you can see the browse dbfs under the catalog from here you can upload the files here we have uploaded this file automobile price data and there is one more option to upload the file from the notebook upload data to dbfs here we see in the folders under the dbfs root and at the end we read this file the file that we have uploaded automobile price data and to read this file we have defined the data frame df so this video about the databricks file system ends here and do not forget to subscribe my youtube channel and if you have any questions or queries then drop them in the comment section